Guys, it's time for Breakthrough with Coach Lou. Coming to you live from Accelerate Life University, XLR8Life.com. Coach Lou will help you break through anything that's stopping you. Are you ready to get the motivation, the energy, the life, and all the success you really want and deserve? With no further to do, here's Coach Lou. Here's Coach Lou. All right, all right, guys, welcome back to Breakthrough with Lou. It is Monday morning, and we have been rocking and rolling for the last month here. Just absolutely making progress. We've been learning, we've been jumping into things, and just, I think it's been an amazing month. What about you? Let's get some comments on that, guys. What Questions, comments, concerns. What has your month been like? How amazing has this been? So we're going to ask you a question this morning. And that is, what if, just what if there was a secret to success? That if you mastered just this one thing, your success would multiply exponentially and at times feel like it was automatic as well. How cool would that be? And you think, Oh, come on, coach. Is that really possible? Oh, here we go. It's going to be something you're going to sell us. It's going to be some, you know, miracle pill that's going to make it all happen. No, no, no. The great news is there is something that will do this. The bad news is you're going to have to work for it. And having to work for it is not the bad news, really. That's never bad news to have to work for something or earn something. Um, especially in the beginning, you're going to have to put more effort into this. Now, as you cruise through it, a lot of stuff will go on to autopilot. You're going to understand by the end of the show. So stick on with me this morning. We have got some amazing, amazing, amazing things to talk about today, guys. So be ready to rock. Uh, If you have questions, ask me. If you have comments, bring them on. If you have successes you want to share, I want to know about this stuff. If you're not on a live show and you got to catch the replays, please still comment. I do see these. Okay, so I had a training client years ago when I lived elsewhere uh, who was never active in his entire life. Now, I'm not going to give out names or anything, but a great example for what we're going to talk about today. He was 60 plus years old, never into fitness, 80 to 90 pounds overweight, not your picture of fitness or health or anything else. Um, And he needed to make a change. He came to me and said, I want to be your first client in this new place you live. And I I need your help. And of course, you know, that's my call to duty. You need my help. I'm here. That's what a coach does. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a little background and tell you the story. It's very relevant to what we're talking about today. Um, He was committed to being able to do things, you know, really committed to being able to do things like tie his own shoes without a struggle or get through the day with some energy or be able to deal with his clients and his business without having to go home and take a nap or something like that. Um, Needless to say, there were health issues creeping up maybe even too quickly on them. And they're really starting to rear up their, their ugly little heads too. And you know, now you really have an issue because now your health is really paying off. You know, you've, you've been 60 years on the face of this earth, never fit, never put that as a priority, didn't you know eat healthy. Uh, great person, very motivated, but very lacking in energy and tired. So the reality of it was he had his reason why for his family and and so forth to, you know, want to get healthy and and be the best in his business, very motivated in his business. He had the desire, the want, hey man, I want to, I want to tie my shoes. I want to look good. I I want to, you know, finish out our golden years together, you know, looking good and, you know, not, not just withering away and, you know, and it was like really cool. Okay. All right. You want to, you want to, you want to really be an example for your family. You want to be, you, you want to have that great marriage, even though you're 60 plus and very overweight. He had the vision of exactly what he wanted and began quickly showing up for his classes, his training, 
doing yoga as well. He was obsessed about showing up and giving 110%, 120%. Okay, there was no miss, no excuses, no I'm not coming in or anything else. So we fast forward the story a month, okay? And stick with me on this. This is important. This is not about fitness today, but this is a great example. All right, month out, he showed up every day, stepped up, gave more than you could expect out of anybody that age in the physical condition he was in. Uh, really kind of mirrored how he was in business. Very, very good business person, but, you know, did did the work. So on the one month check in, okay, and this is uh, when we check in and and, and do the weigh in and the the muscle composition and everything. He stated to me he felt better and his clothes were getting looser and he must be doing really good and I, he can't wait to see how much weight he's lost. And part of my program was they do not weigh themselves only at check ins because if you weigh yourself every day you could go up a pound, down a pound, holding water. It's very. Uh, very stressful on the situation. You don't want stress. So he was excited for his way in when he did. We were like, yes, drum roll. One month in, you've been kicking butt. You're looking good. You're feeling better. Your clothes are loose. A whopping one pound. Ugh. Some serious tears and major discussion about weight not being an accurate representation because muscle weighs more than fat and all that. But still, I watched somebody who was so excited and so motivated over the last month, just absolutely the wind got blown out of the dude's sails because he's like, I've lost one pound. I did all that for one pound. Oh my God, this isn't working. I'm never going to be, I'm not this kind of, uh, you know, boom, explosion, totally re threw it in reverse. And when I showed him his body comp report, he was like, oh, okay. So the reality was, and I don't remember the exact amount, but it was like he gained five pounds of muscle and lost six pounds of fat, or it might have been 10 and 11, whatever it was, there was a one pound difference in the amount of muscle he had gained and the amount of fat he lost. So the reality was, is he had lost more fat than he thought and he had gained more muscle and that explained the leaner, healthier, and everything else. So the, the getting digging deeper, taking a deeper dive into something, and that's what we're doing today into this truth about the secret of success, was like a, an eye opener. So we fast forward. Let's fast forward a year, and then the story's going to end after this part. So because you're, you're like, get to the point, coach. A year later, seventy five pounds lighter, totally athletic mindset and body. For a 60 plus year old man that could barely tie his own shoes and maybe he couldn't even, I don't know. It was that massive transformation. Still showed up every class, every training session, every seminar we did. He was there front and center working 100%. Okay. This isn't something I did woo woo and made this person change. He came in and showed up and did it. But he says to me, you know, at this one, he says, if I had only known, how amazing the destination was going to be. I would have never shed a damn tear. And he said, frankly, I shed many in private thinking that I wasn't going to ever be able to recover from what I had done to my body. I wouldn't have threatened to quit, nor would I have felt that it was so hard to push through some of these things if I had known where I was going. You know, totally in awe at his progress. I asked, you know, what are your plans going forward? You know, most people are like, okay, well, it's been great, coach. You know, thanks for your help. I uh, got it from here. Or, you know, he said, well, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep coming to you and, you know, five days, six days a week. And, you know, class is on top of it. And, you know, I'm going to step up even my yoga to the next level because I want to climb Machu Picchu. Okay, this is somebody who could barely get through the day physically. And I'm not picking on him, but it was, you know, it was, it was, he, he, he really needed this. But, you know, now he wants to climb this big mountain. And then he said, this really has become my habit. And my new body is my standard, like you teach. And I'm like, oh, yeah, classic example of what I teach. You listened. But there it is. Here's the truth of it. The real secret to success. Are you ready? I just told you. Okay. His standard and his habits are what will continue his success and growth. Okay. 
not the not the year of hard driving and showing up and listening to me and doing what you're told and you know and 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 everything else it was all of a sudden this became a habit 5 30 a.m boot camp was not something that was going away training sessions three four times a week were not going away yoga classes eating clean foods going for walks you know, going on vacation and instead of eating garbage, going on the type of vacation that was supportive of their health and, you know, what they what their goals were. But it was so freaking cool to get that realization that the, the reality is, is, okay, it was a lot of structured hard work that got there, got you there, but it's the habits and the standards that are going to keep you there and get you continually moving forward. Let me say that again. It is the standards you set and the habits you develop that start to put this stuff on autopilot. Okay? So when you raise your standards, what you have is this new standard. I'll no longer settle for eating sugary garbage. Or I'll no longer settle for, you know, leaving the office early and, you know, not making those last three sales calls. Because oftentimes that one or two or three more that you do, like Ed Milet teaches the, the power of one more. I'm, I'm reading that book right now and it's amazing. You know, do that one more call, that one more mile, that one more minute in the cold plunge, that one more clean meal each week, that one more prayer, that one more I love you to a loved one. Something, you know, it, 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 that, that really inspires me when Eddie talks about that stuff. Okay. And, you know, I say do one, two or three more. Let's go, go even higher on that. But the, the truth is, is that's where your real wins are. The standards and the habits are what are going to keep you going forward. Okay. This is the real win, the real secret to success. This is not lose 10 pounds before the wedding, only to put it back on afterwards. Pay off your credit card debt. Pay off all your debt. Just to go and invest and buy a brand new car that's overpriced and go right back into debt. Get a divorce and go find a new relationship. But you bring the old you into that new relationship. Okay? I've never been a proponent of divorce unless it is a necessity. Okay? My beliefs have always been, you know, if you committed to a marriage or relationship, you... You stay in that. You don't just, it's not something you just throw away. You don't throw people away. But sometimes stuff happens. Or sometimes people were never meant to be together in the first place. Sometimes, you know, the physical was all you really had. And then it's like, oh, well, okay, there's more to it. Or sometimes you, you had some beliefs and coolness and, you know, and, and a mission in common. And that kind of brought, led into other stuff. But then you realize, well, we're better off friends. We're not really in love. Okay. Not being in love sucks. I mean, things, these things do happen. So could divorce be a viable thing to do? Yes. But what you got to realize, especially if it was kind of a fiery divorce and there were problems, you maybe just maybe you got to understand that you can't take your bag of problems to the next relationship and expect that one to last. Okay. And sometimes it's pretty one-sided and, you know, people were at a great marriage and the other one was horrendous and, and you know, abusive or whatever. And, and that, then they had to get out and it wasn't really of their own fault. But well, the thing is, is maybe they waited too long to get out. Maybe they, they stuck around too long when they knew it was done. I don't know. But the case should be what, what you got to understand is you're going to take you into the next whatever, the next job, next relationship. Next child they have, you might go, oh, I kind of screwed up on my first kid because I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, things are okay. But, I, you know, now I, I would be a better parent the second time around. Well, I don't know if you're going to be a better parent second time around, but you definitely have some more tools to work with the second time around. Okay? So the whole process of the last month has brought you to today. Okay? To get you in a mindset of creating these winning habits, making the higher standards, Okay, we don't get our shoulds. When you should do something, you should all over yourself. Stop shoulding all over yourself. Stop sitting in a pile of should. Okay, a pile of should isn't going to get you anywhere. Dig out. Okay, 
We don't get our shoulds, we get our standards. What we make a standard is what we will get. And you might be like, coach, I got high standards and shit doesn't always happen like I want it to. Okay, well, that's part of living. That's part of growing. That's part of why you got to step up and create even better habits and better standards. Okay, if you want this continually, you better have a standard up here because there's always something clawing at it. I'd be a liar to tell you that, you know, when things are going great or you really set a high standard, that there's not going to be people and situations and everything else that's going to try to drag that down. And they don't always try to do that to be nasty. Sometimes your own family will try to bring you back to earth. Oh, we don't want to see him hurt himself. We don't want to see him chase another dream and fall flat on his face or her face. Come on, let it happen, people. I'd rather see you go 150% and fall flat on your face and learn a whole hell of a lot of lessons than kind of play in the background being a wallflower going, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll watch that football game from up in the nosebleeds. Hell no, get down on that front row or better yet, get on the field. That's life. Life happens. If you want to use football as an analogy, it happens on the field, baby. Now, it's really cool to experience it close up if you're not on the field. But you want to be the one sitting up in the nosebleeds going, who's that player? Got a little story for you. Uh, and this will maybe give you an idea. A friend of mine years ago that I worked with said, hey, you're a great auctioneer. Will you, will you come announce my son's football game? Oh, shit. Well, that's not really my specialty, but hey, I can talk on a mic. I can see. Well, we get up in the box, and that was before I had brand new eye lenses. And I'm like, I can't see the kids' names. I can't see their, their jerseys. I can't even see the numbers on their jerseys. Oh, no. And I'm like fumbling through this, and I'm getting the look like, what's the matter with you? Well, a big portion of them was I really couldn't see it. But the other thing was is... I, I didn't have a good filter for it. I was so t far back from the action. So we're getting, you know, like down to the last quarter. And I'm like, and I step into the next little booth and they got the camera. Oh, son of a bitch. The camera's got this big old screen. It is high definition. I can see everything. I can see a, a, a freaking gnat on the field. And I'm like, why did we not, uh, why, 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 why didn't I announce from in here? Oh, you can do that. It, I'm fumbling all over it because I'm trying to read jerseys and stuff. And so the last quarter we do it from there. And wow, it was, you know, people are like, wow, you got really good at this towards the end. No, I clarified. I had a clear vision. It's like having a clear standard and a clear habit. Now you can see what you, where you're going. You've got the tools to get there. The camera, looking through the, the big camera screen was a great tool because it gave clarity. Now your standards are going to give you clarity. If somebody comes to you and says, you know, the economy's tough right now or we're, 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 we're struggling you know, let's let's put together a mastermind every Thursday night or once a month and get our local businesses together and really mastermind and, and advertise together. Let's let's put a standard for this community and then get you know work hard to make more money and, and get some habits together and we'll all market and do a podcast together and get it out there together and combine efforts on social media. That's great. What if your friend comes to you and goes, Hey. Let's go break into some houses and steal some gold. I got an outlet to do that'll pay me cash. And it's easy. We just figure out who's not home. What? No. That's not my standard. First one, yeah, let's go for it. Requires a little more work. But that's not my standard. I'm going to go steal from people. You see the difference? The person that doesn't have a good standard would go, well, I'm going to justify this because I got to feed my family. And yeah, it's tough and we're getting evicted and I got little babies. I'm going to go break in houses with you. What? No, no, not good. Because then when you get arrested, you really can't do anything for your family. But standards are where it's all at, guys. Standards and habits. Wow. So the key is to make sure that the standards that you have are your standards. Yours, 
not mine for you, not your parents. Oh, my parents said I need to be a, an engineer, so that's what I'm going to go to school for. Or, you know, we're three levels deep of, you know, army army men in our family, so i am got to go in the army, even though I really want to go in the Air Force. But, you know, dad and granddad and great-granddad were all army, and if I do, if I do something different, oh... You know, that's um, their standard was you. You've got to be, a, a, you know, infantrymen. You screw those guys that fly those airplanes. They're not military or whatever the case is. You know, we've all dealt with it. But, or law enforcement. Hey, you know, granddad, dad, and, you know, they were, they were all city beat cops. Okay. Well, I really want to go into investigations or I really... I want to be a, 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 a defense attorney. Oh, try doing that in a law enforcement family, right? See, but that's your standard. It's got to be your standard. You have got to have your own standards. Build them. And do not waver from them for anybody. You know, can you imagine being a kid growing up? Dad and granddad were, dad were, were beat cops. And I have a, the, the utmost respect for our law enforcement and on a side note, we need to unhandcuff them and let them do their jobs instead of making the criminals the right ones and the cops the wrong. Let them do the job, but that's a whole discussion for a different day. But can you imagine going? Well, I want to. I want to go be a you know a, a public defender because people need representation too. Oh my God, you're going to get your head ripped off. Oh yeah, your standard for this family is you lock them and cuff them and stuff them now. That mentality is not really the police department mentality. But there's a couple of guys that that's it. Oh, if, you, if it looks like you're guilty, you're guilty. And that's where it all comes out. But maybe you have a standard because you know a friend you went to high school with that got falsely accused, did 10 years in prison, and now he's out. And his life is kind of screwed. You know, they figured it out. But you go, you know what? I don't want to protect the bad guy. Okay, they deserve representation too. But my thing is to make sure this doesn't happen to the good guy. Okay, that's a standard. Not that you go, oh, I'm going to go out there and get, you know, child killers and everybody else, you know, acquitted because I'm such a good attorney. That That's kind of being a scumbag, you know. But if you're the person that goes, you know, my mission is to make sure that nobody innocent sits in prison, that's a pretty darn good, noble thing. But it's got to be your standard. You can't do it just because maybe your friends or your wife or your husband goes, oh, you know, you, you don't want to be one of those corporate attorneys. You've got to go be for the little guy. And you're going, my whole, my whole thing is I want to go, you know, be a, a cutting edge law, uh, corporate lawyer. You go to your standard. Okay. I'm not here to tell you what your standard is. Uh, your standard should be for a greater good, your greater good, and for everybody else is great and good not to be a destructive you don't want to i wouldn't say if your standard is you have a radical belief in your religion don't go become a terrorism and blow pe- terrorists and blow people up that is not a good standard okay a good standard in that situation would be and if you're in a part of the world especially maybe like the middle east where there's so much tension between the religions and you go let me be an innovator that tries to bring the religions together and have some peace now, that's a damn good standard. Not let me go blow somebody else up because they call God differently than I do. That's not a good standard on any any end of it, guys. That's not any one or two or five religions. This has gone on for, for, for millions of years where people have killed each other over the name of God. And I don't think that's very acceptable. Okay, Everybody's got the right to believe what they want to believe. I know what I believe, and I love what I believe, and I'm not afraid to say it. Okay, but have your own standards is the key factor here. Okay, so in summary today, find out what's stopping you. That was step one. Give yourself that green light and the permission to go for it, not anybody else's permission, yours. Find your why. Why is it so important to you? Find how you're going to get there. What is your clear vision? Make that map and go create some standards and habits In another 30 days when you're on the show, you're going to be a different person with these. A year out, you're going to look back and go, holy crap, that show that day with Coach when I figured it out that it is really about my habits and my standards and I implemented that and that's how I live my life. No matter what those standards and habits are, that's not for me to tell you what they should be. 
make sure the greater good for you and the ones around you but seriously get on that that is the key it is there's no quick fix it's about designing the lifestyle it's about designing the standards and having that desire that will not stop burning within you to continue to grow that's how you will succeed that is your secret to success Am I extra excited this morning? Yes, I'm crazed about this because this is amazing stuff. So get on it right here and now. And what have I always told you? Never leave the site of making a goal or making a decision without taking an immediate action. Let's do that right here and now. When you get off this show this morning, what is your next immediate action? Okay? So in summary, the standards you adopt, the habits you create, Along the way, are what are going to keep you on course and set your course for success. Now, again, I'm going to tell you this. I'm not going to tell you that when you have great standards and great habits that there's not challenges. Stuff comes up all the time. So what you have to learn here, learn and grow forward. Yes, I said grow, not go. Learn and grow forward because as you're going forward, you're growing forward. Okay? Always be developing new habits, honing your habits, continuing to raise your standards. When you do this, you create maximum, maximum levels of success and growth. And that's what it's about. Success, growth, and contribution. Okay, give back a little. Teach it. Create it. Create something good for people. Okay, this has been a great journey together. Okay, you may ask, what if I want to continue this journey? Well, number one, the show is going to continue on, but we're going to shift gears. Um, but I'm glad you asked. You can always set up one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, guys. I'll do that. We can do it local, in person, or we can do it on Zoom. Uh, you know, it's great. And I have really exciting news. If you like this kind of interaction, you want even more, Coach Lou Inner Circle, click, C-L-I-C. Get in the click, baby. It's almost ready to be launched full force, okay? Inner Circle has great trainings, super in-depth, deep dive trainings, live monthly meetings where it's not just me talking at you where you get to where we get to communicate it's a meeting together to grow okay to ensure you're staying on track i'm opening registration for coach lou inner circle aka click at the beginning of august but in the meantime we are going to get you uh, a weekly newsletter so sign up for that i'm gonna throw in a free gift i'll send you when you sign up for that and that'll get you some trainings and get you prepped up to get started into Click. Um, and join us every Monday live for Breakthrough with Lou as well. Not changing Breakthrough with Lou. I'm going to continue it. Guys, please, please communicate with me a little bit if, uh, as we're winding out here um, on the time. If 7.30 would be better for you or 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is best for you for uh, Breakthrough with Lou. A uh, little bit more on uh, Click. Coach Lou Inner Circle, that is going to be a live uh, monthly meeting. That's going to be some in-depth trainings. That's going to be really cool, some events. Uh, it's going to be very interactive. And I know people go, oh, my God, those, you know, Inner Circle things are like $2,000 a month, 1000 It's not. I, I've got mine set, you know. Uh, we're going to have a founder's rate, very, very, very affordable to where you won't even notice that you have the cost of it. Because I want to over deliver. I want to grow our community to the next level. And again, not just talking at you or getting some chats in, you know, and responding, you know, during the show to a couple of questions. I want you to be able, I want to be able to really deep dive even deeper into this stuff with you so that you can grow. My goal is to support you to grow. That is really what it's all about. So I'm really excited, guys. Lots of cool stuff. Remember, get those standards up there, set those habits, put them to work for you. If you get in a jam, we can do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, love to have you on Coach Lou Inner Circle. is going to be really, really super exciting and going to love every minute of that. That is the next level of what we're doing. And in the meantime, until we meet again next week for Breakthrough with Lou, and please, again, give me some feedback on those times. Because even though you can watch the uh, replays, I love having you on live. Have an amazing day, guys. Live with faith, energy, passion. Always live your dreams. This is Coach Lou signing off. And I will see you on the next roundabout. Ready to take it to the next level? Next level. 
Tune in to XLR8Life.com for our live shows, encore presentations, life-changing courses, and live coaching with Coach Lou himself. As Coach Lou always says, live with faith, energy, love, passion, and always live your dreams.